Number 222 is the meanest question in this textbook. Probably the hardest question. Very, very tough to kind of even understand what they're asking for. But um, let's break it down. So it talks about a, uh, a list of T numbers. Um, these are these list of T numbers have only decimals in them. So they're just decimals in this T. And there are 13, 30 of them. So there are 30 decimals in this list of T. And it talks and defines... Uh, and it says the sum of all of them. So the sum of this list, sum of this list of decimals is S. Okay. And it goes ahead and defines an E and says the E is made up of two types of decimals, either decimals where the tenth digit ends, the tenth digit is even, um, when the, or where it's odd. And it tells us that a third of those decimal tenth digit are even. So I'm going to begin to kind of write that so a third are even the tenth digit is and if a third are even obviously two thirds would be odd meaning the tenth digit so this is about the tenth digit so even an even tenth digit why here is a that's an odd tenth digit now because we know there are 30 numbers in total that instantly tells me that a third of 30 will give me there'll be 10 here that are that have an even tenth digit and there will be 20 here that have an even tenth digit because the total is 30 so again just establishing um, things as they give it to us now the question is asking us to subtract the sum that we get from e minus the sum from s now keep in mind s is just the sum of all those decimals regardless of whether they have an even tenth digit or not while e is the sum of the tenth digit classified by those that have even 10th digit and odd 10th digit and that's where the confusion starts so watch how i break this down i'm going to say i'm going to round up oh by the way it tells us that for the even 10th digit if you see an even 10th digit situation round it up okay uh round up the decimal and if you see an odd 10th digit round it down round down okay and at the end of the day, it's asking you to simply just do the E minus S, right? The E will come really from the results of this round up and round down, while the S is just a sum of everything. So the question now is, you're probably wondering, well, I don't know the decimals. If only I knew what the decimals were, I could actually round up and round down like I need to. So the trick with this question is to actually, you have to pick numbers. You have to almost kind of look at every possible case because if you look at the question, it actually says which of these is a possible value, meaning you have to imagine every possible case. The good thing about numbers is if you really think the most basic numbers we have in our world is zero through nine, okay? And so when you're thinking about rounding up, this only happens with an, the, the round up happens with even 10th digits, right? And rounding down happens with odd tenth digit. So let's imagine examples. I'm going to imagine an example like 3.2. Okay. I'm also going to imagine an example like 3.4, 3.6, 3 3.8. Now you're probably thinking, why three? Doesn't matter. This front number is not really important. It's this one that matters. This is the tenth position. The tenth position in a decimal is the number you write right after the decimal point. That's the tenth position. And for the round down, we know this happens with odd tenth digit. That is going to be 3.1, 3.5, 3.6, 3.8. Guys, this, these are the only options you can have. Now, the three in front, it doesn't really matter. You could use any number for that. But if you're going to have an even tenth digit, it's either going to be a 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, or 0 0.8. I don't care what the decimal is. If you're going to um, um, have an odd de uh, tenth position, it's going to be 1, 5, 7, or 9. Th these are the only options. So check out what the question is saying. The question is saying you should round up, okay, round up. Um, actually, let me see how I could do this. I could do this in a very interesting way there. It's telling you to round up in this case. So let me move it and kind of describe that. In this case, it's saying round up. So if you round 3.2, if you round it up, it's saying pretty much round it up to 4, right? So in each one of these cases, I know these would just be rounded up to 4, regardless of what's happening in the decimal. And it's telling you for the odd situation, just round down. And this will round down to 3. 
round down to three, round down to three, round down to three, regardless of what's going on. And the question, the thing you need to recognize quickly is, guys, there are only going to be, in every case, the question already told us, there are only 10 of these even ones and 20 of these odd ones. So essentially, I am going to do this. I'm actually going to multiply 10 by the setup here. Understand that the 3.2, 3.4, 3.6, 3.8 represents the S number. Remember, these are my S's. Okay, these are my S's. While this 4 is what we get when we do the rounding, and that's my E. Okay, and the same thing here. My S's are these guys, and my E are the rounds, right? So I'm just saying I'm going to have 10 of them for all my even ones, and for my odd ones, I'm going to have 20 of them because that's what the question said. I'm going to have 20 of them. So let's see what kind of results we get, really. Um, if you look at this, I'm just and the reason I'm putting it in this way, it actually makes it easy to kind of just do the math. It's just 10 times 3.2. This is going to be 32. So this is telling me if the number, um, if the number had been 3.2 and you just you're know, going to ha and have an average of 10 of them, you're kind of having 32 and then this is 40, right? This is 34 and this is 40. This is 40. This is 40. This is 36. Okay. Again. Do I know these are the actual numbers? I'm just doing an estimate, really. Um, well, it's almost like, yeah, it's like an, I'm averaging. If the average of, of them were 3.2 and I had 10, then the total will be 32 for the actual S's. And the S's are just the decimals. If I have 10 of them that have a 10th digit of 2. Same thing here. I'm just going to multiply this. It's going to be 62 times 30 and then 2 times 3.1. This is going to give me 62. And this is going to give me 60. This is going to give me 60. This is giving me 60. And then... Um, Let's see the numbers I wrote down here. This is going to be a uh, 70. This is going to be 74, just two times 3.7, and then two times 3.9. That's going to be 78. Okay. So what we now have is we have a list of all the S's and E's, and all this is t telling us to do is to do an E minus S. Now, remember the list of 30 decimals has both evens and both odds. So when I'm thinking of my E minus S, my E position has to have a sum of both E's on this side. So the E here, I'm, get, I'm saying I'm having a total of about 60 combined sum on the odd side and 40 combined sum on the even side. So a total of 100 for my E minus for my S, I need to look at my S here and here. That's a 32 and a 62, and that's a 94, and that subtraction is 6, okay? And then you're going to do the same thing here. So I'm just going to do a minus of that. I'm going to think about the E and S, the E and S, and I'm just subtracting each case, okay? So if I look at the, let me change the color here. If I look at the E in this spot, it's just going to be, uh, what's, uh, uh, 60 plus 40. Actually, it looks like they're all 100. I don't know when I think about it. I didn't notice that. So 60 plus 40. So it looks like all my E's will just be 100. If you look at all the E's we have, you know, all here, because all of these are 60s and all of these are 40s. So that's good. It's really the S that's changing based on which one I am checking out. Um, and again, because I don't know, that's why we have to look at all these possibilities. So what are my S's? My S in this second level is 34 and a 70, which is a 104. And my S at this other level is um, 36 and um, 74, which is um, 110 there. Make sure I got that right. Good. And this is going to be 116. Well, if you just do the subtraction here, you're going to get a minus 4. If you do the subtraction here, you get a minus 10. You do the subtraction here, you get minus 16. If you look at the answer key in your textbook, the question is giving you, is saying, hey, which one of these is correct, right? It tells us, is it one, is it two, is it three, where one is, um, hey, you could get minus 16, two says you could get six, and three says you could get 10. Well, you, as you could see, the only ones we can get that are possible, um, if you do this E minus S and do all this complicated stuff, um, the only things that are possible would be um, six, 
and also 16 in the answer key they gave us. So this is possible and this is possible. So the answer here is B. So this question, again, you are only going to get this question on GMAT if you are so good at the math. So if this is stressing you out right now, just press click next and go to the next question because honestly, you're not going to see a question at this level if you're not really, really solid. Um, you're seeing questions like this because you've done way harder questions below this and it's giving this to you because it's like, oh, this is the only question I can give you that's challenging, you know, that kind of thing. So if it's throwing you off, if it's giving you a headache, just go to the next one. Um, it's not a big deal. Um, you, you're not going to get every question right. You just want to be able to get questions that are really solid at your level. And for everyone, it's different. This is an adaptive test. So you want to be kind of aware of that. So that's how you do this question. The answer is B.